Hi, Peter. Uh, thank you for doing this for us. Um, just our members on our society had a few questions they wanted to ask you about today and about okay. the People Power Change program. Okay. So, um, firstly, you say People Power Change seeks to help people with big ideas and talent. So, some of our members are saying, well, what, what about the people with small ideas, uh, the people that programmes don't normally seek out? How are you going to reach those people? Yes, I suppose um, uh, small ideas uh, are, are in the eye of the beholder, really. Um, there are very many. I speak as someone who has spent 20 years in government, ideas which local people regard as small, but um, the system actually um, regard as big. So I think we can kind of uh, get a bit hung up uh, on, on the language. Um, we definitely want to get people to feel that they have the opportunity to make a difference on what matters to them locally, big uh, or small. Um, we've just been hearing in our conference about the power of small ideas, the power of just getting up, getting out, getting involved, um, and if we can lower the barriers to entry, the, the, the opportunity to get engaged locally, then that'll be an important part of this programme. So I suppose I'm agreeing actually very much with the spirit um, of that question, and I think that that's coming through quite strongly in the conversation today. That's great, thanks. Um, some of our members want to know, will People Power Change invest in community broadband? Um, I don't know. Um, it, I suppose it will depend on how compelling um, the case for that is relative to the many other investments that might come before us and also um, what the government is promoting in this territory. I mean, as a lottery funder, we always have to be distinct from and additional to um, the government. Sure, okay. Um, one of the big projects you've announced today is your square mile, and um, quite a few of our members have got some specific questions about that. Um, one is, how can people experience in this field, both on social technology and community development, contribute to that programme? Is there, an, is there a way that other people can engage with it from uh, the outside? I think those are questions for, um, for your square mile. I mean, I think it's really important that what they develop, I mean, we're, we're investing in the technical technological platform that they are developing. It's really essential that that connects with and inspires um, communities because its success will be dependent on the extent to which that's taken up. So. I very much hope there will be those connections, but that's a question you sort of need to put to your square mile, really. Okay. Um, how can people power change um, help those who support communities rather than just um, directly the communities themselves? I mean, we're seeing a lot of the infrastructure disappearing in the spending cuts. I mean, have you got any view on where, where you might have a role to play in that? Um, it's well, it's the it's the outcomes, the difference that is made in in communities and some of that is definitely again we've heard this morning about equipping people with the skills and aptitudes and awareness that they need to do that really effectively so I'm sure that will be um, a part um, of, the, of the picture. Okay. Um, we've got a specific question about government. Um, I mean, how do you see yourself working with government particularly to help people take advantage of the powers that, that communities and individuals are being given by the localism bill? It's a really important um, relationship and connection to be made that I would honestly say probably at the moment is uh, uh, is underdeveloped. So as that bill goes through, we would want to have conversations definitely with the, um, uh, the civil servants in that area, but probably more importantly, hearing from the sorts of people who are asking that kind of question about, well, where might we be able to help and encourage and support that sort of activity. Okay. And, and just finally, um, how, do you, how are the results of the People Power Chain programme going to be shared more widely? Um, well, it's, calling it a programme is quite a strange um, one really. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's a philosophy, it's an emerging set of principles I suppose that are going to influence um, what we do uh, as a funder. I think we want through the conversation today and as we go on to get sharper about exactly um, what we mean by people power change, what does success look like, when will people know or say that the big lottery fund has held true to um, particular principles and, and part of what today is about is to refine and define what those mean. I mean I, I personally would like to um, see very many more um, individuals telling the sorts of stories that I described in the article I sort of put online this morning of seeing their dreams come true um, locally because that's so kind of powerful to the individual and communities but often has so many more um, spin-off benefits so um, yes more to be done I would say on that.
Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you for okay. that. Thank you.